I hope it is going to be a bit better in the morning. So I'll take more captures of Comet 3A Atlas. I was looking at the data that NASA posted during the press conference. They missed a lot of stuff when they were talking about Comet 3i. I do wanted to highlight some of those important things that we missed during that press conference. We wanted to go back in time. So it came in in a hyperbolic trajectory coming all the way from the top of the solar system and passing Neptune orbit. If you back calculate, uh, it might have came in around 2017 and it must be passing all the way and we started seeing that in 2025. And when it came in closer and closer to the sun uh, in the March time frame, it was having a perihelion with sun. So it is coming closer point to the closest point to the sun. During that time, NASA's satellite, the Sirio, did take picture. And when you look at the pictures, the Comet 3 Atlas got 400 times brighter than a normal comets that generally brightens around like maybe 100 times. So even if you compare with the comet R2 Swan, this one got 400 times brighter. It changed from red to blue, like in between it skipped the green and it went back to blue. I think that we could have highlighted it because of the unique chemical composition that this comet has. And then once it completed the perihelion with the sun, it moved on to the Mars. And you saw the pictures of Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter and NASA released that blob of the picture from taken from the Mars uh, Reconnaissance Orbiter, MRO. And there wasn't much details there and there is a lot of backlash from everyone asking for more details. Actually, there is an important point there that we all missed. During March 2025, using SpaceX, there is a non-profit research institute called Southwest Research Institute. It sent four satellites, they are called Punch. And those four satellites go um, and stay in the orbit of Earth, just above 600 kilometers from the ground. So they are designed to take the solar wind 3D model using those, uh, those four satellites. Now, those four satellites are designed to observe the, the solar wind. So during the Mars conjunction with the Comet 3 Atlas, they did pointed out their satellites towards Mars and they, they took some pictures and those are wonderful pictures. In my previous video, I was actually comparing the, the pictures that I had taken and I was calculating how big the coma of this Comet 3 Atlas is and I came to like around 17,000 kilometers diameter. Earth is around 12,500 kilometers. So it's a much bigger coma than the Earth itself. So when I was looking at this picture taken by the punch satellites, you will see on the top the Comet 3 Atlas being very bright and you see the Mars going across. Now you are seeing the backside of the Mars because these satellites are uh, designed to look at the Sun. So you are seeing Mars going by and the Sun is on the other side. But you see that bright object there, which is the Comet 3 Atlas. That picture was taken before that press conference and that would have been very impactful for people to understand how big Comet 3 Atlas is. Not only that, think about it. Let's say these, are, these satellites are 600 kilometers above the Earth and they are looking at Sun. And when they look at this Mars and 3i, the 3i is on the top, Mars is going by, right? Imagine you start flying towards Mars. 
right? Mars is going to get bigger, three atlas is going to be bigger as well. And imagine you stand on the Mars and taking a look at the comet 3i. It's going to be a ginormous object. I think that is something that we should have learned from those pictures. I don't think there is any talk, there was a press statement released afterwards, releasing these pictures, but the impact of it wasn't there in that press conference. It should have been. Comet was moving away uh, from Mars now, coming close, coming towards Earth and going towards Jupiter, right? When we are seeing the brightness of the Comet 3i going up and up, you know like why it is so bright, because it is so big. How big it is, you will only know when you compare that with the other comets around us. The solar system comets that we have seen and bigger comets, if you categorize them in the first category of bigger ones, Comet 3A also goes in there. But it is a, an interstellar object. So being interstellar, coming from a different solar system, not ours, being that massive, you have a unique opportunity to take a look at the chemical composition of this really old relic that we are looking at. And that would have been very impactful to understand the importance of how rare this event can be because you are seeing this massive object coming through our solar system and we have an opportunity to take pictures, understand, do some research on what it is. Now, once it passes through the Mars, it is going to give us a better pictures from the Earth. It goes towards Jupiter. And when it goes towards Jupiter, there was quite a bit of noise around. It is going closer to the hill radius of the Jupiter. Uh, hill radius of Jupiter, planet Jupiter, is very, very big. Jupiter itself is a huge planet and the hill radius is much bigger. Any comet that is going out of our solar system may actually be passing the hill radius anyway. Hundreds, thousands of comets pass the hill radius all the time. Now, that's not unique about the 3A Atlas. The 3A Atlas is not just going, uh, passing the hill radius. Comet 3A Atlas is going very close to the Jupiter planet itself and going. And how many times and how many comets have we seen coming this close to the Jupiter and passing. Very small number. You can count maybe two or three comets that went this close to Jupiter and moving away. I have a lot of updates on Comet 3 Atlas, so click on the notifications button and like button. You get notification when I post a new video on the Comet 3 Atlas. Let me show you the data that I captured. So this is the data that I collected. I removed the background stars and I just wanted to see how this comet is going to look without any background stars. And to my surprise, it is actually quite beautiful and brighter. You can see the comet itself. I'm not interested in the tail. I'm not interested in anything else except the coma of the comet and how big and impactful it is. And the most important thing is you'll start seeing the, the core of it in the middle, right? Which is a little bit pointed. So I'm going to take more pictures of this data. This is now looking like that Hubble picture coma that we saw in our previous videos. So as it is coming closer and closer, the central region of the comet is showing that pointiness, right? Uh, like the front, like this. So that's what I was interested in looking at it. That's what I was uh, trying to understand how it is. It's not just a blob in between. It's like this, right? So I'll, I'll show you the, the comparison of what I did with the Hubble images that, I, that were taken. These were the Hubble images that were taken. And take a look at these ones. You see the pointedness of the area, right? That's what I was going after. There is something there that we might need to, and obviously you can see it spinning as well. 
when we start looking at this comet, we might actually see the shape of the comet more and more clearly when it comes closer to us. The nose of it is actually more pointed than the rest of the body, right? It's kind of interesting to see that. Or maybe I'm just looking at it that way. It may be an illusion for me, but this is the picture that was taken by Hubble. And all we are doing is trying to take a look at it. And that's what I'm seeing now as it gets closer and closer. Hubble is an 8 meter telescope. It's like 16 times more massive than the backyard telescope I'm using. If Hubble takes a look at this comet now, it can take a lot more details and great captures of it. No one can resolve it like the James Webb te Space Telescope or the Hubble Space Telescope. None of them can resolve the core of the comet. We can't really see the surface details there. I believe JWST is 8 meters and Hubble is what, 1 meter? I totally forgot. Maybe I'm mixing up. But anyway, so Hubble is 1 meter, James Webb is 8 meters if I'm right. But anyway, you can look it up. But if you, this is what, 2025? So if you wait, or if we all wait until 2037, like seven, no, 20, 2032, seven more years, they are, send, they are actually making a telescope here on the ground, which is a 30 meter telescope. With that telescope, we should see the structure of the comet as soon as it comes into us. So that would be the time. I don't think we need to worry too much about how does it look. But for now, we are guessing about the structure and using the tools that we have. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do. And click on the notifications button and the like button. So when I post the new videos, you're going to get uh, notifications about the recent updates, whether Comet 3, Atlas or any other astronomy videos. Thank you.